welcome to Natty's Crafts. I'm Natalie. I always do all the crafting. And today we're going to make some wall art. I saw something at a store. I think it was Ross. Uh, they had this, I was looking for something for my bedroom. My bedroom has an empty wall and it needs something there. So it has to be big. And so this wall art that I saw at Ross, I could do it. It looks like I don't know. It looks, I, I don't know. I'll show you a picture. How about that? I'll show you a picture right here. And I want to make it. I don't want to pay the $129.99 that they had on that price tag because that's crazy. So instead, I'm going to make it. Now, today, we're going to make just a small one just so that it's easily, you know, uh, videoable, cameraable, recordable, recordable. <laughs> so it's easily recordable. And then I'll go back and I'll make a big one for my room. But so I just wanted to give this a try. I've never done it before. I don't know what it what it would be called, but pay attention and make sure to do all the YouTube things. Give this video a big thumbs up. Go ahead and leave a comment down below and subscribe. Make sure to subscribe. So go ahead and subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell when you subscribe. And I think that's all the YouTube things. So do all those things and let's go ahead and go take a look. So here is what we're duping today. Again, this was from Ross, $129. And I'm making a small one today, so this is what you'll need. Canvas and a curtain. I used this very thin white curtain for mine because I want mine to be all white. And then some glue. I'm just using the Jot, the glue from Dollar Tree, Jot glue. One bottle was enough for this, one bottle was more than enough for this small uh, piece. When I make my larger one, I will probably need the full bottle. So first, we're just going to get it all together. Now, this curtain, this came as a package of two in their long or tall curtains. And it came as a package of two. It was $16.99. So, you know, if you wanted to separate it out and find out costs and all that, it this would have been $7.99. Nope. It would have been $8.50. $8.49. Uh, for this curtain and then we're just going to take off the tag there is a tag in the curtain so if you find a curtain that you like and it does have a tag you know just cut it off it's fine because we are able to hide the remnants of that behind on the back side of the art we're making and so then I'm going to just take my small canvas and I'm just going to do a very rough layout of how I'm going to want this uh, curtain to lay or how I want the fabric to lay and you could use fabric for this as well. You don't have to use a curtain. I just, I like this material on this curtain. It had some texture to it and it was very thin. So I like that. So I'm just very loosely laying it out and then we're gonna cut it out. So I put two snips on the sides that I needed to cut and then I'm just gonna do my best guess at cutting it. Now, if you are a perfectionist, then you probably want to measure this out and get a straight line and all of that. I know that for this, I was fine with just doing a rough cut. And because of the way that you're gathering the fabric, a rough cut is just fine on this. You're gonna end up cutting off a lot of the edge anyway. So once we've got it all ready, then we're gonna make our mixture. And again, I use one bottle of Jot glue, and then I filled up that same bottle with water. And simple as that and that was my uh, mixture then I just kind of swirled that around stir that around a bit and then I'm going to lay my fabric right inside of there and I did drench the fabric I didn't want it just partially wet I wanted the whole thing wet so I did completely drench it and then just pulling my canvas over so it's ready to go and then I am going to squeeze out some of that liquid off of that curtain. So once you've got it squeezed out well enough, you obviously it has to be wet, obviously. That was the purpose. <laughs> but you don't want it sopping wet where there's liquid just flying everywhere as you're taking it away from the bucket. So... I'm just going to squeeze it out pretty well and then find the bottom because there is a side that I specifically wanted as the bottom. So that's what I was looking for there was the bottom of this piece of curtain that I'm using. And then we're just going to lay it out. And so again, just taking the piece that I wanted on the bottom 
which happens to be the bottom of the curtain, which is why I wanted it at the bottom of the art piece, because then it'll be flat and lay nice and all of that. And then we're just going to drape this. Uh, you can make these bumps or drapes as big or as small as you wanted. I wanted to make them a little bit larger than the art that I saw at Ross. In my opinion, I should have made them smaller, but this again was my first try. So never done this before. So just doing what I could do to figure it out. And again, I am making a larger one for my room. So when I do that, then I can go back and perfect my technique. But it's really up to you and how you want it to look. Maybe you like the, the large creases in it. Maybe you like really small ones. It's totally up to you, which is the fun part about it. And so I'm just trying to get it perfect the, the way, you know, that I'm wanting it. And it's kind of fun if you get some angles to it. Uh, my curtain does already have the texture, but then I also wanted uh, the angles and just kind of the look of very random, sporadic art. <laughs> I don't like, you know, flowers and mountains as art. I like just random, abstract art. So once I've got it all set up the way I want it to stay, I'm just going to let it sit overnight. And I'm setting it on top of the bucket so that all the extra liquid, liquid can just drip right off. And I set it on top of my silicone mat so that I did, had basically no cleanup. And once it's dry, this is the next day, once it's dry, um, you can see that the curtain is stick, standing straight up. So that means the Mod Podge, or it's not Mod Podge, that means the glue is working. And we're just going to staple down the edges and that way it won't come loose or anything like that. It'll stay exactly where I put it. And as always, I must apologize for the autofocus. Again, I don't know how to turn that off. I have to go to the store and figure that part out. But I'm using a staple gun to staple these edges down so that it does stay tight. Basically just doing a technique as if I am upholstering this canvas, this piece of canvas. And I am putting staples on all four sides. And we're going to cut off all that extra fabric. So don't worry about that yet. Here we go. So here we're going to cut off all that extra fabric, fabric so that it's not looking crazy on the back of our piece of art. And then we'll go back and we'll staple it one more time to make it smooth and clean. And that was it. I mean, it was just that simple. And you can see mine is, is different than the one I saw at Ross. And I, I want... To redo when I redo it I'm going to make my creases smaller but I thought it was cute I thought it was a great first try and I'm happy so I thank you so much for stopping by Natty's crafts today I sure hope that you could give the video video a big thumbs up and leave a comment down below and as always make sure to subscribe when you hit subscribe make sure to hit the bell so that you know when the next video comes out I sure do appreciate you stopping by today and I uh, want you to also <laughs> Appreciate today as tomorrow is never promised. Y'all have a great one.